Hit it. All right, sports concepts and rationalizations coming your way. We call it the 10-minute drill. We do it each and every day. At the end, we give out a wonderful prize pack. The prize pack today includes what, Beef? Uh, we're going to get our bellies full, Dan, with $25 to spend at Woody's Barbecue. Oh, that'll be outstanding. I look forward to that. Thank you very much. Uh, keep listening for your opportunity. Felipe Franks has decided it's Arkansas. Uh, I was thinking Kansas might be a better choice. I don't know. I, you know, um, only I think because... Felipe, it's going to be an interesting uh, experiment to see how much of a Dan Mullen creation Felipe Franks is. Yeah. I have a feeling Arkansas is not going to get... An overwhelming quarterback. Well, they open with Nevada, who's not easy, by the way. Then they go to Notre Dame. Um, then they have at Mississippi State, Texas A&M. They do have Charlie Southern, a familiar Felipe Franks foe. Uh, Alabama, LSU. They got Tennessee at Auburn, Ole Miss. They got the ULM Warhawks. And then uh, wrap it up with Missouri. It's a tough sketch, man. If, if, no, it's the SEC West. So. And you're Arkansas. So, um, yeah, it's, that's a tough road. Tough road to hoe, right there. Buddy. Yeah, for sure. So I, uh, I, I don't, I don't like his, I don't like his chance. I think you go to Kansas, you play out there with less. You, he's familiar with you. You, you, if you can get to, you know, six wins, you get a bowl game. Who knows? Maybe the one thing about Arkansas, it's clear what he did here. We picked and chose, you know, where the playing time was. Arkansas's most experienced quarterback has thrown like eight balls. Oh, I mean, okay. they got nothing there. He's so a guy. Yeah, he's going to be the guy. Yeah. But like I said, I have a feeling Arkansas fan will be. Disappointed with what they got. I'm not saying it'll be terrible. Yeah, but I think Felipe Franks owes his production to Dan Mullen exclusively, and I think you're going to get more what Jim McElwain had than you are. I, I mean, I think it's disconcerting that Felipe Franks goes out and and that Kyle Trask is, in my mind, significantly better. Yeah, I, I that's really the only to me blemish on Mullen as an evaluator and a coach. What were you doing? I mean, why? Yeah, I don't. I don't so, necessarily agree with that. I, I, the, been the, down that road the Colorado times. Rockies are are some piece of work. Yeah, these dundering fools mm-hmm. first signed Nolan Arenado to a contract that you just can't play out. You can't pay anyone that much money and and it work for the time that he assigned for. They paid him an ungodly amount of cash. Here. Well, I mean, sometimes that works. I mean, pitchers have gotten deals and they've won World Championships, so. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of money for a lot of years, but he wasn't like on a bad team. He wasn't 32 when he got it. Like Pujols was. Oh, sure. I get it. You know, he was a young guy and he's delivered, hasn't he? Well, for sure. He's probably the best all, all around, one of the best all around players in the league when you factor in his defense. Well, the Rockies spent the majority of this off season Mm -hmm. pimping him out. Trying to get a trade for him. It's documented. It's well-worn. It was an aggressive approach. And I would say it was even, you know, uh, one of their missions of this offseason was to unload Arenado. The Cardinals, Rangers, and Braves, uh, those teams that showed the most interest. Well, now. By the way, in the last five years, 42-130, 41-133, 37-130, 38-110, 41-118. And a career-high BA this year, a 315. He is sort of this era's. Albert Pujols. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. He's a great anyway, player. continue. The difference is Pujols were, played for a team that knew what they were doing, and they won. Until he went to the Angels. So, right, right. But the Rockies <laughs> can't. I mean, but Pujols got paid like that before he went to the Angels. Yes. But the Rockies don't know what they're doing, if you ask me. Uh, so, he yeah. has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years left. Yeah, on his... it's a huge, and he has an out after like a year or two. So right after twenty twenty one, he can opt out. Yeah, so I mean that's why teams aren't just jumping at the at the bit to to make a trade. Well, anyway, their GM, a guy named Jeff Burdich, Jeffy Burdich, it comes up with this gym yesterday. Yeah, out in the uh, newspaper in Denver, mm-hmm. with the season coming up and spring training on the horizon, we're going to start focusing on that. We have listened to teams regarding Nolan, and really nothing has come of it. We're going to move forward pretty much as we expected, with Nolan in the purple and black, and as our third baseman. So uh, we can put this to bed and collectively look forward to the upcoming season and work toward that. You hypocrite! Mm-hmm. Oh, we're just going to move as expected. Well, if you're moving forward as you expected, then perhaps your Rangers, Cardinals, and Braves would be among those that we would call as contrary witnesses. Well, th- this is the part of the story we're getting to. Okay. Arenado now has had enough. Oh. You guys are something else, I'm paraphrasing. What's he saying? Quote, it's a lot of disrespect from people there in Colorado, and I don't want to be a part of it. You can quote that in reaction to his uh, announcement. Arenado also said this. You, you ask what I thought of those quotes, and I say, I don't care what people say around here. There's a lot of disrespect. Asked 
what was said that he found particularly disrespectful. Arenado said, no, I won't get into those details. So they have now managed to alienate their highest paid best player. Yeah. Well, uh, I get it. We're still paying you 35 I think if you go into trade year. talks with a guy of that, of that caliber, though, Dan, you have to trade him. You can't. Well, the problem is that opt out. Well, That's where teams are not going to offer a lot because they're only getting his services for two years. Yeah, well, the problem is that why does Colorado need to trade him? That's well, the problem. The problem yeah. is the Rockies. Yeah. It's not Arenado. Or the, they did all that. Right. It, it's just nonsensical. And they lost 91 games last year, and they're not better. Did they do anything this offseason? Not that I recall. And we had Daniel in here. I don't remember him saying anything that just shook up the world. So mm-hmm. um, They'll have a healthy Daniel Murphy. That'll help them. Uh, the 2020 Hall of Fame uh, uh, is revealed tonight. That'll be Derek Jeter and Larry Walker, and that will be it. Uh, Jeter will probably join Mo Rivera in the 100% club now that we've done that, now that we've broken through. Yeah, we broke the seal now, so now we're going to look up in 15 years and it'll be like eight of those guys. Yeah, yeah, he'll get through. Kurt Schilling, in my opinion, should get into the Hall of Fame, and I suspect the only thing keeping him out are some of his uh, ridiculous comments that he makes on Twitter, like when he responds to sports writers with pictures of um, uh, hanging rope and a noose and a, a tree and things of th- that nature. Uh, but uh, he gets frustrated. But I think he does have the numbers. So uh, we shall see if Kurt Schilling gets in. I don't think he will. But it looks like Larry Walker will be close. Uh, Bonds and Clemens have been moving up uh, on their eighth ballot. Uh, they plateaued at 59% last year. They say they know the voting. Like, some people make their ballots public, but the ones who don't, the numbers always go down. Uh, both Bonds and Clemens are currently under the 75% threshold, so there's no way that number is going to go up, so they're not getting in. So Derek Jeter will get in. Um, maybe not Larry Walker. And then, of course, Ted Simmons and Marvin Miller were already voted in in the uh, whatever you call it. Ted Simmons committee. better player than Dale Murphy, according to the experts at in Cooperstown. Yeah, I know. That's ridiculous. I know. Um, and then I was looking ahead over the next five years, like new to the ballot next year. Uh, Huddy, Mark Burley, Torrey Hunter. Eh. Yeah. Uh, 2022. Tory uh, Hunter's probably could be. Could 22. Be. Well, not a first ballot guy. No, though. yeah. That's 2022 true. is a fun one because A-Rod comes in. And last year on the ballot for Bonds and Clemens. I guess if you're, I guess so, if you're Bonds or Clemens or those guys, you're rooting. Well, it won't matter if that's their last year. But and now, what do you do with A. Rod? Yeah. I mean, he's a two-time offender. He won't get in the first time. He yeah, shouldn't he, get in at all. No, he won't get in. If you're not going to put Roger Clemens and Barry Bonds in, you can't put A. Rod in. I would agree. Uh, David Ortiz, Teixeira, Jimmy Rollins, Joe Nathan, and Papelbon are all eligible in 2022. Well, none of those guys to me are Hall of Famers. Uh, that's what I mean. So 2023, maybe, Nathan, maybe here's a good one. Carlos Beltran. Well, yeah, he was never a steroid guy, was he? No. Well, he should be in, shouldn't he? Or no? Is his numbers not that great? Well, he's one of 38 players to reach 1,582 runs and 1,587 RBI, so I would say, yeah, he should get in. What was that? He reached 1,500 what? 1,500 plus um, runs and RBIs. In his career? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this guy uh, uh, says, I guess even in a couple of years, the sign stealing issue will be fresh enough to taint his legacy. He'll get in eventually, but not on the first ballot. Uh, Jeff Kent will be on his last year of the ballot. Uh, 2024, Beltre, he'll get in. Maurer, Utley, Wright, Bartolo Colon, Matt Holiday, Adrian Gonzalez. So, I mean, it's just I'm saying it doesn't look like there's each row's 2025. He'll get in. But it doesn't look like there's a ton here heading in in the next decade in the 2020s. To me. Well, it's bad timing, or maybe it's karmic that for, for Bonds and Clemens, because at a time where the field is going to come back to the pack, yeah. you're going to go off the ballot. Yeah. Like, if they'd have stayed on the ballot through those lean, these lean years coming up, then maybe there would have been more of a, you know, a, of a movement. Right. I think it's hard to get anyone real, real excited to, to argue too forcefully for the steroid guy. And especially, here's the problem with Bonds and Clemens. They were kind of jerky. 
Right. Right? And so that, that doesn't help him. Andy Pettit wasn't. Well, that's why, like, when you said A-Rod certainly won't get in, you know, the way he's remade his image is amazing. So well, I, I just wonder. Don't, I, I agree with yeah. you. He's no, not I, getting I, in. Yeah, but. I, I don't really care. Yeah. I mean, I, you could put them all in to me. Yeah. I mean, I think we've way overreacted at the time, and no one's budging off of it. No. A lot of players. I were think d- you're right, though, about the jerkiness. Yeah. You know, and Roger Clemens saying, you know, I don't give a da- dang if I get in the Hall of Fame. Remember he said that, like, yeah. forcefully? Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, you do. But, you you know, if you weren't such a horse's patootie, you know, and Bonds was maybe worse than Clemens. Uh, well, For sure. It didn't come clean yeah. on any of it at all, you know. No, they, well, how come your head grew six sizes? I, you know, can't, can't tell you why. Um, But anyway, tonight around 6 o'clock, you'll hear that Derek Jeets. Uh, and the only, yeah, I'm with you. The, the only drama there is he, is he – you know, 100 is unanimous. I, I listen. I enjoy the back and forth on Twitter, Jeff. I was a little bit uh, uh, blown away by uh, uh, some of the talk yesterday uh, regarding the Chandler Parsons accident. Chandler Parsons got hit well, by. What's a, the side that would argue untoward? Ch- Chandler Parsons got hit by a drunk driver, mm-hmm. and um, I didn't investigate it, or I, I just was like, my no, God, he's leaving, wanna... he was leaving a practice. It said, so it was... it said traumatic brain injury. That's true too. He's that dead. suggests. Brain damaged. I don't know well, how. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, his brain is damaged now. I don't know if it's going to forever Correct. leave him, you know. But. His career was dead. And he's made millions of dollars. But the whole implication was, well, why is he? Because he's the, the lawyers came out and said, why are they suing this guy? Well, well, because he was drunk. Yeah, because he's a drunk driver. And who cares what money he gets? Yeah. Make a point. The guy Correct. should go to jail. How right. about that? Right. Don't drive drunk. And nearly kill someone. I mean, I was. And people are uh, on, on Twitter, social media. Are like you know I can't believe this millionaire is suing this guy. You know, the people oh, are come so, on, man! Yeah, they're not always the most level-headed yeah. group. So that was a uh, that was silly. People like you that have like an informed media opinion to put on social media is a whole different animal than people that think anyone really. Chandler gives a Parsons, crap what they think. Chandler Parsons, by the way, the first ever Florida Gator to be SEC Player of the Year in basketball, if I'm not mistaken. And it was always kind of like you know it wasn't a great year, but Chandler Parsons turned out to be a pretty good. He's good uh, pro too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Made a lot of money, got a, uh, but his career was winding down. He was, I think he was he on your Hawks right now. Yeah, that's where he plays. Yeah, yeah he's so on the Hawks. He was part of like the Memphis dump salary de- yeah. uh, dump. He makes twenty five million this year, and they're just you know going to play him for a year and then move on. He'll never play again, though. He he has been uh, beset by injuries for yeah. the last couple of years. Yeah, he's he had like a knee, play, and he hadn't played significant minutes. He signed uh, a huge a deal with I think the Grizz, and he was and it and it was a bad move by the Grizz because he's not he's hurt. Um, but anyway, Dan, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot down one of your time tested, one of your Uh-oh. theories, one of your beyond a theory, one Uh-oh. of the one of the foundations that you oh no preach yes right? very very preachily yes I do on this radio program I sure do and you've now proven uh, once again mm-hmm. to be proven dead wrong on this oh so boy I'm gonna ask you if you're ready to amend one of your tenets that I, I believe after this is shining example has to be now deemed untrue. It might still be a dicey situation, but it's not a never-do-at-no-cost situation anymore. And that situation Mm -hmm. is dealing or trading with the New England Patriots. Okay, wow. Yeah, and the reason that that now is you want to call the Patriots immediately and see if you can swing a deal. Yeah. Because as we sit here on the eve of of the Super Bowl, Uh the, the San Francisco 49ers will ride in behind quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo Mm-hmm. Who, if we now go back to the 2018 deal, mm-hmm. the San Francisco 49ers got for the bargain basement price of a second round pick. Yeah. Not a good move, New England. Not a good move at all. That was a tough move. It was a, listen, that was a, that's a little bit different. I'm not going to amend that. I'm not going to amend that as long as Belly's there. No, I will not. No, I will not. And listen, there have been, like, Chandler Jones would be a better argument. Yeah, but they haven't missed him. They miss him now, is the point. They're going to go with – they have an uncertain quarterback future. We knew that was going to happen. That's the owner. The old man stepped in on that one. We know that. Okay. This was 2018 they traded him. Okay. Okay. What did the Patriots – Oh, uh, 17. What did the – okay. They what, got a second-round pick. What did the Patriots do in 2017? They lost the Super Bowl. What did they do in 2018? They they won the Super Bowl. What did they do in 2019? Uh, the dynasty crumbled and ended, and they'll never win again. That was this year. Okay, so 17, they lost to who? The Eagles. Okay, and 18? They beat the Rams 10-3. Okay. 
And now in, in 19. Their quarterback is done and they'll never win again. The quarterback is headed to Tennessee. You would rather have Jimmy Garoppolo now, finally, at this point, than Tom Brady. But that's what, the, that's what Belly wanted. That was the whole bone of contention. We got to make the move. And Kraft said, I can't do it. Yeah, I don't understand. They weren't trying to. I, I, okay. It's kind of like the, it's a, it's a little bit like, you know, the Manning and Colts deal, man. Yeah. And the Colts opted to let him go. Well, okay, whoever was, in any regard, whoever approved or disapproved. Do you, do you disagree with that, though? Do, do, that's how it played out, right? Am I, am I well, mis- I mean, that we got the narrative kind of after the fact that Brady wasn't comfortable with him there. I don't know exactly how that played out, but I think in hindsight you should have Brady just sensed, franchised him. Brady sensed, and again, Garoppolo, by the way, is on a really good team and hasn't done anything that impressive in terms of leading his, his and all rec- these his, re- his record as a starting quarterback yes. is the best in the league. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Because the one year he came in the middle of the year and went like 6-0. and oh. Yeah. And then he blew out his then knee. he blew out his knee. Hardly got, played. And because he blew out his knee, what did the what did the Niners do? They were terrible. And what did they reap? They were already a good team. Yeah. They had a horrible year. Yeah. They were able to get some good draft they picks. They got Bosa. Bosa. Yeah. And Debo Samuel. But they yeah. could have got anyway. Well, maybe. Top of the round, though. But I'm just saying that worked out. A blessing in disguise. He comes back. They're a really good team this year. And, you know, so far, so good. Here's who the Patriots ended up getting. With the second-round pick? Well, oh, no, dear. Well, the second-round pick, like they did, they ended up trading it. And by the time they were all said and done, it was worth about eight players. Okay. <laughs> um, so, either direct- I agree, by the way. It's a yeah. major advantage. But uh, what were you going to – listen, I, I they did the I, best they could, though, Jeff. They traded him to the NFC. They were going to trade him in the AFC. Yeah, they just didn't get enough for him. Yeah, but what could, at that point, you couldn't get at as much. At that point, what I would have done is I would have kept what did him he, and he franchised won, him. What did he win? Like, as a backup quarterback? But he people won, do that. Yeah, but you're still paying him quarterback money. Yeah, but it's a backup money. quarterback because you know that Tom Brady is gone soon. He's done, buddy. You would have had Jimmy Garoppolo. They're done winning titles with Tom Brady. Jimmy Garoppolo would have transitioned into the starter probably this year. This year That's correct. 2020. Yeah. But, but Brady, by the way, still thinks he can play. Well, he's wrong. Yeah. Well, yeah. he wasn't horrible last year. No, but Was he better than Garoppolo statistically this year? I, he's not better than Garoppolo. I would rather have Garoppolo for the first time no, in my life. No, because he's younger. Well, Dude. that's right, because he's younger. He's better. Right now, he's better. I think. I, I don't know that, Jeff. I want to uh, – hold on. Just watch Brady just, this year for the first time just panic and get rid of the ball. Yeah, but and, you're and acting like he throw. was – He wasn't very good. I'm not acting like he was the 22nd-ranked quarterback in the league, which yeah, is what he was. Garoppolo was a little bit better. 27-13 and 13 for Garoppolo, uh, about 4,000 yards and 69%. On a team that runs it more than the Patriots do. He only threw it 476 times. But, yeah, so 13-3 uh, and three is a starter. He's 21-5 and five as a starter. Uh, that is buoyed a little bit by that. By that, uh, he remember all you had to go on. Look, Rob Johnson, the Rob Johnson. He had played a little more than Rob Johnson. He, had, he played two. Huh? Rob Johnson played one. He got hurt in the second game. Yeah, he played two games. Yeah. He was two and zero as a starter, and he was really. But he, good. Looked, he looked good. He yeah. always looked good in the preseason. I, I, I just feel like, and I know it's. I, I just feel like we all knew he was going to be good. You knew when the Niners got him, yes. they were upgrading. This is a well, starter. not when they got him. I thought so. Nobody knew. Well, the Eastern Illinois kid, you know, we, we don't bad. know. I, okay. But then there were whispers. The this kid's pretty good. Like, uh, and I think Belichick was ready to move on from Brady, and it'll be great to see when Belichick does the documentary. Oh, yeah, I wanted to go, but, you know, uh, uh, Bob said, no, 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 we can't lose Tommy. And, you know, I understood that, and we're going to ride with Tommy, and we did. So here, we, here, rode, we uh, rode to uh, two more Super Bowls. Here's, I will say this about the Patriots. Uh-huh. No one can turn a second-round pick – the number 43 selection in the 2018 draft, into, eight into guys. more capital than this guy <laughs> somehow did. They traded down. They started. Uh, they used that pick to create more capital. And so directly or indirectly, here's what they got for Jimmy G. The Niners got Jimmy Garoppolo. And with uh-huh. that second-round pick, it ultimately became all of this. Okay. Cornerback Duke Dawson, former Gator. Yeah. Who's hadn't done much there, no. right? Linebacker Christian Sam. I don't think he's in the league. Cornerback Joe Joan Williams. Mm-hmm. I don't recall him playing much for the pay. Running back Damian Harris, who I, yeah. I guess the verdict's out, but he didn't do anything as a rookie. Right. Uh, an offensive tackle who doesn't play much. Kajust. Yeah. Um, quarterback. Don't J- bring me down. Kajust. Uh, quarterback Jarrett Stidham. <laughs> yeah. Who, yeah. I don't know, we'll see. Yeah. And a defensive tackle Byron Cowart. Yeah. And um, he's not, got, not a whole lot, but let me ask you this question. And a 2024 20, rounder this year. <laughs> well, there you go. Cash in on that one. Let me ask you this question. If Brady were on the Niners, would the Niners be in the Super Bowl? Um, There's no um. Of course they would. Well, I don't know that. Brady oh, was. Oh, that's I, silly. Hold on a second. Shame on you. 
Did you watch him against Shame the Titans? You. Did you watch him against the Titans? I did. Okay, he was terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He had. He, he, you don't he, think he could have handed the ball off? I don't think it's so quite Sunday. that easy. I, maybe but it this was. Past, this this game. Yeah. I don't know if they had Brady if they would be the top seed. Matter of fact, I'd say they wouldn't be. So uh, no, I don't know uh, if he was on the. I mean, it's, look, here comes a time I mean, where it's fair. I'm not going to allow you to bash the goat. I'm not bashing it. You are some piece of work. When the goat still had game, I was the one promoting him. And now that the goat doesn't have hey, game, you're going to ride him. First off, I admitted I was wrong about it. I know that, but I'm saying Years you can ago, trust me I'm off the hook. in my goat analysis Wait. when 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 No, those... I don't trust you. Well, you should. No, because, because I, you're wrong. The last eight years when you had him dancing in Brazil with yeah. no more championships. Now there's Sao Paulo in the, I mean... in the, in the flower fields with Giselle, Bunchen. Right, where he should be. A beautiful wife. Well, I used wife. to call her Giselle uh, uh, Ono. <laughs> Yoko Bunchen. Yoko Bunchen. That's what I called her. Anyway, uh, uh, listen, I, I, you know, it's a good, it's a good topic, but I, I'm not, I, I, I won't come off that. No, I will not come off that. And I will come off this though. Caller number two right now at six four one ten ten. You want to go to Woody's for lunch? Oh man, you'll be happy you did. That's some good eating. Six four one ten ten. We're back. Uh, more coming up on the drill process. It's a Catlin Chuck Don't Tuesday. Don't forget nine o'clock nasty. Dan has been uh, teasing With it since seven. Land. I I'm only I glad that find I, it. all I can say is thank God we're not a visual medium. I can only imagine what he's got in store. <laughs>